Hello, my name is Hallie, and I'm going to take you on a brief history journey on the progression of the English language. English didn't always start out sounding the way it does today. It took centuries to develop, and we're still adding words to it today. In the 5th century, Germanic settlers from Friesland brought over the first forms of English, written in stick-like characters called runes. Once there, Christianity helped shape the language since sermons were written in Latin, and Latin provided an alphabet with symbols and characters that we were able to easily write and copy with. One of the first forms of Old English that you might be familiar with is the epic poem called Beowulf. Beowulf was the first great epic poem in the English language, though the author is unknown. The first lines of it sound like this. Lo, we have heard the glory of the kings of the Spear Danes in days gone by, how the chieftains wrought mighty deeds, often skilled chafing, rested the mead benches from troops of foes, from many tribes, he made fear fall upon the earls. That probably sounded familiar to most of you. But did you realize that that is actually translated? If you were to read Beowulf in its original Old English form, it would look more like this and sound more like this. What? We got a dinner, near Dagon, Theod Kuninger, Thrym Yfrunon, Huther Adelingus, Ellen Fremidon, Of Schild Schäfing, Schäden Athreatum. Quite a bit of a difference there, isn't it? But that, in fact, was English, and it just comes to show you how far the language has come today. Now for the fun part. In order to show you how much English has progressed today, I'm going to take a well-known skit from the 20th century and reenact it for you with the help of my cousin Tad in the forms of Old English, Middle English, Early Modern English, and finally Modern English. The words gradually become more similar to today's English as each time period progresses. The game for you is to try to figure out what we're reenacting before we get to modern English. Good luck. Ayola. Ayola. Who got him today? Goad. 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 El hook swahiti thanks one. They gave us some bail pedure. Dag swife from made a nama. You take nama. Lace nama. Lace nama. Nu, on se hage luusis ge drut, we have an hya beyond un first, quet beyond un other, ik don en kunen beyond un frida. That beyond what ik wana to finden ut, ik wana to to tellen me se nama uif se mien on se hage luis ge drut. Ik am tellen thu, hya beyond un first, quet beyond un other, ik don en kunen beyond un frida. So kunen se men nama? Gea. Well, done haye bien plegen first. Gea. Ik manen se man nama un furus plata. Ja. Se man plagien furus plata. Ja. Se man un furus plata. Ja beyond un furus. Well, what I don't asking me for? I can not asking thu. I came telling thu. Ja beyond un furus. I can am asking thu. Ja beyond un furus. That beyond se man nama. That beyond ja nama. Yeah. yeah. Did you catch any of that? Yeah, Old English really does sound like a foreign language to the modern English today. English went through some tough times before it reached Middle English. Invasion by the Vikings in the 8th century, then establishing a peace treaty with the Danes. And then in the 4th century, with the loss of the Battle of Hastings, England's now new king, William the Conqueror's native language, was French. Normans had completely taken over, and none of them spoke English. During this whole time, though, the lower class that still spoke English absorbed many words from their new rulers. French speakers and English speakers mingled, upper class and lower class, adding new words. The plague helped out English a bit by killing off a big portion of the upper class French speakers. By 1385, English had overtaken French and was now the language of the court. King Henry IV became the King of England and declared English his mother tongue. During this time comes the greatest English poet of the Middle Ages, Geoffrey Chaucer, the author of the Canterbury Tales, which now brings us to the language of Middle English. Oh, 
Oh, good morning. Good morning. Born in Loaken, they even bought plant today. Very strange Namus. Bona Namus? No, false and Namus. False and Namus. No. On St. Uh, Louis Compagne, we have woe is on firma, what is on secunde, not is on trida. That is what he'd want some to him find in. He wants some yo to tell in me the namus of the manin on the St. Louis Compagne. He are telling yo it. Woe is on firme, what is on secunde, not is on trida. Yo it can know in the manin namus? Yes. Well then, woe is plan firma. Yes. Em min la man nema un firma plata. Whoa. The man plan firma plata. Whoa. The man on firma plata. Whoa is on firma. Well, what are you asking me for it? E be not asking your way. E be telling your way. Whoa is on firma. E be asking your way. Whoa is on firma. That is the man nema. That is whoa nema. Yes. Starting to sound familiar? Middle English is slightly closer to modern English than old English is, still can be just as confusing. English continued to grow and progress after Chaucer. During England's battle overseas with the Spaniards, English picked up 10 to 12,000 new words. By the end of the 16th century, the building blocks had been laid to build the modern English we know today. English growth could not be controlled. But now English speakers wanted to turn the language into literature, make it more poetic. So the poets arose. This brings us to a man from Stratford-upon-Avon, who added 2,000 words to English's vocabulary, not to mention his poems, sonnets, and plays. I'm talking about English's greatest playwright, William Shakespeare, which brings us to early modern English. Good morrow, sir. How fare thee? I fare well. What cheer? My friend, how does thou like yon rounders team of St. Louis? Are all these varlets here to play today? They are. Then this shall be an awful game. And that I'm sure twill be. Prolet, my friend? Yes, sir. And thou dost now lead on this team? In sooth I do, a heady crew of men. And when thou do call, what calleth thou then? It is the standard practice of our team to call forth what to others may perplex, like gentle names to lead them all along. Who is on first, what is on second, and third comes, I don't know. Then that is what I wish to know. And it is what I am telling thee. Who is on first, what is on second, and third comes, I don't know. Thou art sure of the terms thou must apply? I. Then, sir, who plays on first? I. Go forth and tell me, then. Who? The name of the fellow on first base. Who? The varlet at the first. Who? The villain at the first. Who is the man on first? Why dost thou now ask me? I ask not, but I tell thee. Who is on first? Thou hast but told me not. Again, who first? Thou sayest. The rector, please do tell. Who? The boy is who. That is his name. Whose name? Indeed. Methinks you probably haven't figured out by now. Besides changing of a few words, meaning, syntax, and whatnot, give or take a couple hundred years, you get what we have today, modern English. Pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock and founded a colony in 1620. Others joined over time. The new country later declared independence from the motherland in 1776 and formed the second stream of the two main strands of English, American English and the former British English. Samuel Johnson wrote his dictionary for England and Noah Webster wrote his for America, unifying the language countrywide. Which now brings us to the early 20th century, when our script was first recorded by the comedians Abbott and Costello. In modern English, we finally give you a portion of Who's on first? Hmm. Hey, Tad, how are you? Hey, Hallie, great. How are you doing? Good, good. Now, hmm. So, strange as it might seem, they're giving all players today very peculiar names. Funny names? No, nicknames. Nicknames. So for instance, like on the St. Louis team, you've got who's on first, what's on second, I don't know's on third. That's what I'm trying to find out. What are the names of the fellows on the St. Louis team? No, that's what I'm telling you. Who's on first, what's on second, I don't know's on third. You know the fellows' names? Yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean the fella's name on first base. Who? 
The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. So there you have it. Centuries of the English language and its progression to where it is today. And as an extra bonus, we've decided to perform the skit in its most modern form so that the younger generation can understand. English language is still progressing today. We continue to add words to our repertoire, though they aren't as revolutionary as liberty, pajamas, or amazement. They're more like selfie and hashtag and twerk. Nonetheless, from the tiny country of England, English has spread throughout the seas and is one of the top 10 languages of the world, not to mention the universal language. English is spoken in 83 countries and regions, and is spoken in 105 other countries. It's also known in fact that the World Wide Web is dominated by the English language. Almost 56% of the top 1 million websites content is in English. Walt Whitman once said, viewed freely, the English language is the accretion and growth of every dialect, race, and range of time. It is both the free and compacted composition of all. And English will continue to grow and progress over time. Who knows what words will be added in just the next century. Sorry. Hello? No, I'm not doing anything. Yeah. What? One second, I have better reception. Nope, I said you. It came knocked asking him thing. You have to, it's a. <laughs> this is Jesus' robe. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go when you're ready. Okay. Oh, go to more. Go to more. Say two. All right. Oh, 
Oh, go to more. Go to more. What would it awaken? That even ball playing together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, Yoway Kanoan, the Monon Namus. It's Namus. Namus. Because it's name, but it's just Namus. Yoway Kanoan, the Monon Namus? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yoway Kanoan. <laughs> Yoe Kanoan. No, keep going, keep going. When thou do call, what okay. call if thou then? And thou dost now lead on this team. Sorry, I was smiling. <laughs> and thou dost now lead on this team. You gotta kill me a few seconds. So <laughs> they recover. Hold me not. Again, Wait, are we first. Are we filming for real? Well, man, no. We progress over time. Who knows what new words will be added in just the next century? Hold it. Took that time. Help it. Race and range of time is both the free and compacted composition of all. And English will continue to grow and progress. You gotta flip the sign. <laughs> First. I'm not asking you. You are asking. You are asking. <laughs> I'm asking you. Right. I'm asking you. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Blooper real.